A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, September 6, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video I would like to talk about three topics. First, let's talk about Invest 91, which is losing the battle against dry and stable air and fortunately has resulted in the probabilities of cyclonic development continuing to decrease rapidly. In fact, a tropical cyclone is no longer anticipated to form, which is definitely good news for the Eastern Caribbean. In addition, in this video I will take some time to talk about what happened with the forecast of Invest 91, since we are talking about one of the most significant failures in cyclonic development forecasts in recent years. And at the end of the video I will talk about what will happen for the rest of the season and whether this event is a prelude to how much activity we can expect for the rest of the season. Aside from Invest 91, for the moment we do not have any areas of suspicion for cyclonic development, although as is normal during the peak of the season, we will continue to be attentive to any disturbance that could have cyclonic development. If we look at the infrared satellite animation of the tropical Atlantic region, here you can see Invest 91, which lacks significant thunderstorm areas, and this zone is being dominated by little convection and a lot of dry and stable air. Invest 91 really did not find favorable conditions for cyclonic development, and it is now projected to be reaching the eastern and northeastern Caribbean by the middle of next week bringing an increase in rainfall between Wednesday and Thursday for the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. The important thing is that no meteorological model develops this disturbance anymore, which is definitely good news. In the tropical outlook at 2 p.m., you can see that the probabilities of cyclonic development have decreased to 20% during the next 48 hours. In fact, it is possible that in the 8 p.m. tropical outlook the probabilities of development will decrease again and at the moment there is really no reason to think that this disturbance could have any kind of cyclonic organization. So much so that the ensemble members of the American model, you can see that none of them develop even a tropical depression, as well as the members of Google's artificial intelligence model, in which none of them have cyclonic development. However, something interesting is that in the last run, between 5-10% to of the European model members develop perhaps a tropical cyclone, but these probabilities are really extremely low and in fact coincide with the low probability indicated by the National Hurricane Center. Now, although some members of the European model have some type of development, as long as the operational models do not show cyclonic development, there is no reason to think it could develop. So again, we are talking about a disturbance that will move over the eastern and northeastern Caribbean, bringing some rains for the middle and end of next week. And for example, according to the projection of the American model, between 1 to 3 inches of accumulated rainfall are projected between Tuesday and Thursday in sectors of the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. So, let's talk a bit about why Invest 91 did not manage to have cyclonic development. The main cause is that there is a lot of dry and stable air dominating the weather conditions across the tropical Atlantic. In fact, just to the west of this disturbance is a zone of extremely dry air that has been interfering with its formation. And although Invest 91 had a defined circulation yesterday, Thanks to the dry air it was not able to develop convection over this circulation, and this allowed it to weaken significantly. This atmospheric stability across the tropical Atlantic can be seen in the following chart, where since May we can see that the tropical Atlantic has remained much more stable than normal, and this has represented a major impediment for cyclonic formation in this area. In fact, we saw the same thing last year, and it was not until the end of September and during the month of October when the Atlantic managed to have enough atmospheric instability to allow significant tropical cyclone development. Let's talk a little about what was happening with the cyclonic development forecast not only from the National Hurricane Center, but also from the global models, since a few days ago the great majority of them showed the development of a tropical storm or hurricane. This led to the development probabilities increasing throughout the week according to the National Hurricane Center's tropical outlook so much so that we were almost sure that a tropical storm would form, and the development probabilities reached as high as 90%. I want to share a fact. Since 2021, whenever the National Hurricane Center marked an area with 90% probability of cyclonic development, development actually occurred. So, we are talking about one of the most significant forecast failures in recent years. Now, these kinds of events always leave us lessons. First, this confirms that even if the global models have consensus that a tropical cyclone can develop, the reality is that you can never be sure, and also, that forecasts more than 5-7 to seven days ahead have a large margin of uncertainty. Many have asked me if this product is really worth it, where cyclonic formation is projected more than 5 days ahead. I think the projections are already precise enough for the National Hurricane Center to continue with these tropical outlooks of up to 7 days, and what we cannot doubt is that forecasts are becoming more accurate. For example, here I share the chart of forecast accuracy since 1990. And you can see that the forecasts of 24 hours, 48 hours, 
three days, four days and five days have continued to improve over the years, so much so that the five-day forecasts are now as accurate as the 48-hour forecasts were in 2002. So I think this is the clearest evidence that the five- and seven-day forecasts have already improved enough for us to continue having the tropical outlooks of up to seven days in terms of cyclonic formation. And something very curious that we saw in this event is that the first model that began to retract from showing cyclonic development were the artificial intelligence models, including Google's models and the European AI model. And this is quite interesting because with Hurricane Aaron, Google's AI models were the most accurate during the first 96 hours of forecast in terms of track, and they were also very accurate in terms of intensity during the first 96 hours of forecasts. So, Artificial intelligence opens new opportunities to have other tools to evaluate during cyclonic formation forecasts, although for the moment they do not replace operational models. Now then, the big question is, after Invest 91, what will be happening in the Atlantic if we are currently in the peak of the season? Why don't we have any tropical cyclones? And this may come as a surprise to many, since this hurricane season has so far been a little less active than normal. However, the forecasts were that we would have a more active than normal season. First, it is important that you know that we are currently in the peak of the season, which extends until mid-October. So historically we still have a lot of cyclonic activity left, and we cannot think that because of this event or the temporary calm we now have in the Atlantic, it means that the season will not be more active than normal. In fact, remember that last year during the months of August and September things were relatively quiet, and October was very active, and this may repeat itself again this year. Meanwhile, sea surface temperatures remain above normal across the tropical Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the subtropical region. So once the atmospheric stability conditions leave the Atlantic, we will very likely see the formation of new storms and hurricanes. And it seems this will be happening particularly from mid-September and during the first half of October, when a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will be establishing itself over the African continent and the Indian Ocean, generating conditions that can be very favorable for cyclone formation. In addition, we will be very attentive to what happens in the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico particularly during the month of October, because unlike the tropical Atlantic, these areas have had above normal atmospheric instability, and we can see this in the following chart. For example, for the Caribbean, atmospheric instability has remained quite high since the end of August, while for the Gulf of Mexico the atmospheric instability is well above normal. So everything seems to indicate that for the end of this season the Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico could be very favorable for the formation of tropical cyclones. And in the coming days, we will continue to monitor the tropical Atlantic, the Western Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico for the possibility of having some disturbances with probabilities of cyclonic development, just as shown by the ensemble members of the American model, in which some members develop tropical cyclones in the tropical Atlantic, and in the Gulf of Mexico, and the Western Caribbean Sea. But remember that just like what happened with Invest 91, these are long-term projections. Here at Hurricane Info I will continue to monitor and keep you informed of any area of suspected cyclonic development. For the moment, let's enjoy the calm, which should be temporary, since in the coming weeks conditions in the Atlantic may become more favorable for tropical cyclone development. And before I leave, I want to ask you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. See you later.